Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the Discord as well if you want. Here we are. We're going to keep working on the C Sharp console state RPG. So I want to get this state functionality going. Okay, I want to make sure we can have states, create some states. And for that, we need a base class called state. But let's just recap quickly what we did in the last video. I did change the tab size on mine. If you want to keep it at 2 or whatever your tab size is, you keep it. Uh, let me just show you first how to do that. So you go into your tools, options, and you see this text editor. You can change some stuff. And then you can go into general, advanced. You can see find some other stuff. But if you click all languages, open that up, you'll see scroll bars, tabs. So I put my tab size at 4. And then you have all of this stuff here that you can use and change. So go ahead and check that out if you want. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new, add a new class. And this thing is going to pop up again. And we're just going to call it state. Class state add. Okay, now that comes up here. Now you can also add like folders. So if I add folder called states we're gonna keep all our states and everything in here all right and what that's gonna do is that's gonna help us just kinda keep track of where we have all our different types of states and all that stuff so that's good once we have this class ready here we can go into game and we can see we have our variables here what, are you, what I'm gonna do in game is first of all I'm gonna do a private whoops private bool end here since we can get our end variable later but the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna actually do this so you can do this getting and setting of our end variable here get and then set like that you can remove that get uh, no we don't need these uh, once you do that what we can do here is return this end okay and in here we're gonna say if we want to set end well we can do end equals value so this is a cool way this is a neat way in uh, C sharp to kind of quickly create a variable and create getters and setters for it very quickly so for each variable you want to create, you can do this. And you can just kind of minimize that and see, uh, just see the variable name. So that's a cool way to do it. I bet, yeah, our run takes care of everything. That's good. Uh, the run will check the end. We don't need get set for it, but still, it's a good thing to do. Now what we can do is we can do a private, let's see here private uh, state states very good very good so that's one state what we want is a private queue of states okay so that way we can push queue we can push states in and then we can or we'll stack we'll use a stack we'll use a stack and that will help us keep track of all our different states so the way this is gonna work is I just want to show you so in a game this is our main application all right this is our program we come in here and our game is gonna start and then we're gonna go in to a big stack it doesn't have to be this big of states so the first things that's gonna happen is if you imagine this being our stack just a smaller stack like this the first thing that happens when the game starts, like that, this is the first thing that's going to happen. So our stack is going to get an object on it. And we're going to have different uh, types of states. First of all, we're going to have the main menu state. So this might be the main menu, which renders the main menu. It's going to render everything for us and basically our start menu. And from that, we're going to click something. We're probably going to click create character. And then we're going to create another state that is called create character. And that's going to be the create character state, whatever, create character state. And once that's done, we might X that. 
we might remove that once it's done. We might save the character from here and just remove that state. And then we're back at main menu. And in the main menu again, we might click play game. So then the game state's going to pop up. And maybe from that game state, we're going to do a combat state. Boom. And maybe from the combat state, there's some looting state. And then we'll just X those and we'll be back at the game state. So that's how a state controlled game works with different menus, different states, different stuff. We can make those singletons if you know what a singleton is. But I'm not going to do that here. I don't want to go into that just yet. But you could do that since one state will just be doesn't need to be a class in the same sense it can be a singleton where it's only existing once in the entire game right so we can do that if we want but you can uh, you can do that on your own if you want i won't do that right now just keep it simple up in here so once that's done am i even recording right now okay yeah i am okay cool all right so this is not going to be too complicated we're going to create one state and that's going to be our default state we just want to make sure this works so we have our stack and we want to create a function here i don't know why it's not indenting properly anyway private void init states okay init states like that and then i'm going to call that this init states very simple like this and uh, then we're going to do this states dot equals a new stack since you have to create new remember a new stack of states boom that's initialized now we might push the first push the first state and then it might look a little different but this states dot push a new state new state and whatever variables you want to push into here so we're just going to push a new state and we're going to be good the structure of this is going to be a little different since we need to remember this state stack at all times we're going to send this variable into each new state we push so we can continue adding states to it like inception style and that might be a little confusing for you but just follow along and i'm sure you'll get it it won't be too tough uh, but once we push that i just want to make sure that works we're going to do a console dot right line console dot right oh my bad my bad uh, we need to create a state public state constructor and we're just going to do this. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm going to fix that up. Uh, like this. Okay. If anybody knows how to get this automatic indentation, I'll check it out. Anyway, once the state is created, we're going to get a lol printed out. And we're creating a new game. The game is initializing states. And the state itself is going to print out lol. So let's try this. Once this base class is done, okay, stack overflow, that's great. All right, so the issue was here. So what I did was create a public bool end with a capital, and then I set the getters and setters here for this private one. So you can do end.set and end.get. And that, for some reason, that created a stack overflow. Anyway, if I run this now, we should be able to see LOL right there without a problem. And that means that the state is being created. Now, before I end this video, I just want to make sure we understand the whole concept of this. So what we're going to do is if you go to your game.cs, private void in its states, and wherever we push this state, we also need to send in this states. Okay. And the reason for that is we always need to remember the current state. All right. And let's create a stack state reference here called states and this is actually going to take the same variable in here and we're not going to use new anywhere we're just going to do this states equals states that's all we're going to do all right and then you might want to try to see states dot 
get hash code is a good way to see what kind of place in memory this state's reference has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the hash code from within the state and I'm going to print the hash code right here outside the state. So console the right line states that get hash code and I'm just going to do this here. You want to make sure that it's this everywhere. Uh, this states or it's going to print this one out. Um, this states equals states. Okay, so once that's done we should be able to see two hash codes and they should be the same and they are the same. That means we are referencing the same the same states. And if I go into states and I do some inception shit, I do this states dot push new state this states. Alright. The exact same thing should happen in here. Now we should get a gazillion but they should all be the same. So now I have to close this since it's going to crash. Uh, okay, good. So that's how that works. All right, and they're all going to be the same. I can push states from within states from within states. That's the whole point. That's how we'll be able to push game state from main menu state and maybe combat state from game state and so on. So you'll understand this as it goes along. Don't freak out too much. Uh, but we're going to remove this hash code thing. We'll use that if we see any errors. But that's good. That... Whoops, I don't even know what's going on, bro. What did I press? Okay. Uh, so that's how it is, guys and girls. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep playing around with this. Go to tutorials point. Check stuff out. I did add some examples here for later for myself. Um, in case I forget stuff. So I'll keep doing that. I'll show you guys how that works. Indexers is a real cool thing to learn about for C Sharp. And we'll be using that for our inventory and stuff. Thank you again. Hopefully you learned something. Check out the description box, all that stuff. Drop a like, subscribe. See you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.